You are going to do interviews. Now you told me to do interviews. Now you're trying to take me away from them. No. Let me show, let me show, let me show Dante's Boxing Nation some love. Dante's Boxing Nation, what's going on guys? So obviously the world is still buzzing over Gennady Golovkin being dethroned by Canelo Alvarez this past weekend. Matter of fact, one of Golovkin's biggest advocates, Jim Lampley, HBO's Jim Lampley, he kind of stuck his foot in his mouth when he made the bold assertion before the fight, a couple days before the fight, saying that if Golovkin loses this fight to Canelo, his entire career is a failure. You see, Jim Lampley, he understood the urgency of Gennady Golovkin winning this fight against Canelo. So now we fast forward to the results, we fast forward to present day, and now Jim Lampley is comparing Gennady Golovkin to Ali. At least he's comparing Golovkin Canelo to Ali versus Frazier. Now, something else I forgot to mention is before the fight, when Golovkin was walking to the ring, Jim Lampley, he called Gennady Golovkin a living legend. So according to Jim Lampley, from that point right there, it didn't matter what would have happened in the fight. Jim Lampley had already had his mind made up of what he thought about Gennady Golovkin. He was already going to praise him the same way no matter what happened in that fight. Now keep in mind guys, how ironic is it he calls Gennady Golovkin a living legend, but he never called Floyd Mayweather a living legend who we know is the undisputed best fighter of this generation, hands down. We know that, right? He never called Andre Ward a living legend who was forced to move up to a higher weight class to fight Kovalev because HBO did not want Andre Ward to fight against Gennady Golovkin. So Andre Ward actually had to do exactly what we were asking Golovkin to do, which was move up in weight and fight against Andre Ward. Golovkin wouldn't do it, Andre Ward did it, and he stopped Sergey Kovalev. But yet Jim Lampley has never called him a legend before, right? Now I'm gonna read the transcript and quote to you guys exactly what Jim Lampley said when it comes to comparing this fight to Ali versus Frazier and saying that 98% of people in the media, et cetera, et cetera, thought that Gennady Golovkin won the fight. But before I do that, I want you guys to think about this. How is it possible that an American man, an American white man like Jim Lampley, he can praise a foreigner, right? He can praise a foreigner, a white foreigner, if you will, compare that foreigner to a legendary American fighter, but yet not praise any modern day American fighters the same way he praises this foreign fighter today. The only time he uses a legendary black American name is to defend a modern day foreign fighter. But when it comes to the modern day Muhammad Ali's like Floyd Mayweather, Andre Ward, and I'm just talking about in terms of pound for pound accomplishments. When it comes to those modern day Muhammad Ali's, he doesn't call those guys living legends. Those are all rhetorical questions. We know what time it is at the end of the day. Let me go ahead and quote exactly what Jim Lampley had to say guys. And let me go ahead and make the correction going into this quote. Jim Lampley, he didn't say that 98% of fans thought that Golovkin won the fight. He said, by an overwhelming majority, fans and general media have decided Gennady Golovkin won both fights. They don't need to confuse themselves with compu box numbers and round by round scoring and technical analysis via the metric of social media and among themselves on the street. They have spoken loudly again they love the way Triple G competes. They love the passion his face projects. They are enthralled with his heart. 
When Muhammad Ali was judged the loser in his first fight with Joe Frazier and lost his unbeaten record as a result, many in my generation were crestfallen. But then we learned something. As Ali's aura only grew bigger and Frazier had to deal with the reality that the numbers on the scorecard did nothing to diminish the love the audience felt for their hero. Now this is when it gets really weird. Let me go ahead and quote what Jim Lampley said. Now Triple G is something of a latter day Ali, a global superstar seen as having been twice martyred by the hit and bound and impenetrable processes of a sport that can't get out of its own way. Canelo's victory, however, satisfying at first, will ultimately do little to increase the size or passion of his audience. Built in from the start as the result of his favorable cultural perch as the face of Mexican boxing, but the two decisions which have frustrated Gennady Golovkin have dramatically multiplied the size of Triple G Nation, which is now a global cult. You don't have to win to be the winner. That's boxing, that's life. Now, the first thing I want to say, guys, is it's just amazing how eerily similar the comment he just said about Gennady Golovkin is almost the exact same thing he said about Floyd Mayweather right after he beat Oscar De La Hoya, while Floyd Mayweather was in the studio doing an interview with Jim Lampley. Now, the first thing I want to say is it is just amazing how eerily similar what he just said right now about Gennady Golovkin it's almost the same thing he said about Floyd Mayweather when Floyd Mayweather beat Oscar De La Hoya. He tried to discredit Floyd Mayweather's win. He tried to say, really, Oscar De La Hoya is the winner? No, actually, he said that there were two winners in this fight because the fans, they love the passion of Oscar De La Hoya. And then Larry Merchant, he piggybacked off of what Jim Lampley said, and he said, you know, hopefully one day there'll be a heavyweight Oscar De La Hoya, because this is what the fans really want to see. Then Jim Lampley, now keep in mind, you guys know that Jim Lampley, he works side by side with Roy Jones Jr. In that same interview, and while all this is going on, Mayweather is sitting in the studio with Larry Merchant and Jim Lampley. And then Jim Lampley, all of a sudden, he mentioned some of the best black fighters that reach number one pound for pound status. This is exactly what he said. He said, you know, even though fighters like Roy Jones, Pernell Whitaker, and Floyd Mayweather, they reach the top of the pound for pound list, fans wanna see more. Fans wanna see the Oscar De La Hoyas. They wanna see that type of excitement in the ring. So Jim Lampley, he was basically suggesting the same thing that he's suggesting right now, when it comes to the Gennady Golovkin loss to Canelo Alvarez, which is, even though Gennady Golovkin lost, really, he's still the winner. This is exactly what he said when Floyd Mayweather clearly beat Oscar De La Hoya. The difference is, in that fight, there was no controversy. There was no debating who won that fight. And Jim Lampley was still declaring Oscar De La Hoya as somewhat of a winner. And he praised Oscar De La Hoya more in that interview than he praised the actual winner. Matter of fact, this video is up. The, everything that I just explained to you happened. Um, the video is up on YouTube. All you have to do is search uh, Jim Lampley, HBO's Jim Lampley, racist or bias. Just search that, the video will pop up. And you guys will see the actual interview with Floyd Mayweather sitting in the studio right after he beat Oscar De La Hoya and Oscar De La Hoya is on a monitor doing the interview with them. Now, with that being said, going back to some of the points that Jim Lampley was making, if you guys noticed, he was basically trying to say, it doesn't matter if Canelo won the fight because people, they like Golovkin more. That's what he was basically saying. This is the same thing he was saying with Floyd Mayweather. It doesn't matter if you won the fight, Floyd Mayweather. It doesn't matter if all of these black fighters become pound for pound the best fighters in the world because at the end of the day, we don't like them and we like someone else, regardless if they lose to you. This is exactly what Jim Lampley said. And this is the exact reason why Jim Lampley created the Gaddy List. 
He created that Gaddy pound for pound list because at the time that he created this list, there were a lot of black fighters that were pound for pound the best fighters in the world. So what he basically did, he said, well, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and make my own list where it doesn't matter if you're the best fighter in the world. To be on my list, you just have to be someone that I personally like. You don't have to win any of your fights. I mean, Jim Lampley, he didn't wanna come up with a Mike Tyson list. He didn't wanna come up with a Hagler list or an Ali list. He had to come up with the Gaddy's list. And speaking of Muhammad Ali again, you know, it's funny because basically what Jim Lampley did is exactly what Republicans would often do when they try to use Martin Luther King or they try to compare something they said or something they're doing to Martin Luther King when they never even liked Martin Luther King. This is exactly what Jim Lampley did using that Muhammad Ali reference. Republicans, they did everything they could possibly do to try to block the Martin Luther King holiday from becoming a national holiday in the United States, but they failed. This is why you need to be smart enough to not get fooled when you hear some of these biased racist fans sit over here and tell you, oh, I'm not a racist. One of my favorite fighters is Muhammad Ali and Joe Lewis. But meanwhile, they're discrediting every single modern day black fighter and praising non-black fighters over them today. It doesn't add up because if you like fighters like Muhammad Ali or Sugar Ray Leonard or Joe Lewis, you have American fighters today that have similar styles. The only difference is boxing evolves like everything does in the world we live in. Now let's go ahead and debunk some other stuff that Jim Lampley said. Now Jim Lampley said the fans and the media overwhelmingly picked Golovkin as the winner against Canelo Alvarez. Now before I shut that down, let me go ahead and make it clear. In the very first fight, I actually thought that Golovkin won the fight clearly. But after I watched it about two or three times, then I said to myself, oh, it was closer than I thought. It could have went either way. But I went on record saying that I thought Golovkin won the first fight when I first watched it, okay? Now, in this fight, I had this fight scored seven rounds to five for Canelo. But if they would have gave it to Golovkin, or if it would have been a draw, I wouldn't have had a problem. I wouldn't have said it was a robbery. But with that being said, let's get back to Jim Lampley's point. Once again, the majority of media and fans said that Golovkin won the fight, according to Jim Lampley. Even if that were the case, how is it possible that Golovkin's own trainer didn't believe that Golovkin won the fight? How is that possible, guys? Think about this for a second. Abel Sanchez said in the first fight, he clearly believed his fighter won. But he says in the second fight, he doesn't believe his fighter won. He believed the fight was even. And realistically, to me, I truly believe that Abel Sanchez deep down, he thought that his fighter lost. But he can't say that because he just may lose his job as Golovkin's trainer. So he has to say the closest thing to saying that Golovkin lost, which is, I thought the fight was a draw. And then he continued to say, hey guys, we need to give Canelo his credit. We need to give Canelo Alvarez his credit for putting on a great performance. Once again, Abel Sanchez didn't say this in the first fight. So he's saying that he doesn't believe his fighter won, and he's saying we need to give Canelo Alvarez the credit he deserves. He even went further. Abel Sanchez then said, I'm just proud that there's another Mexican champion for Mexican Independence Day. This is what he said, okay? And then Gennady Golovkin, he didn't even say he thought he won the fight. If you thought you won the fight, of course you're gonna say you thought you won the fight because you thinking you won the fight has nothing to do with what the judges said. You're just giving your personal opinion. Golovkin could have easily said, you know, I thought I won seven to five, or he could have came out the next day. He could have came out today or, you know, whenever and said, you know what, I watched the fight over and I scored the fight seven five for me. He could have said anything like that. Golovkin didn't do that. So how is it possible 
we have this type of contrast when it comes to the media members. Oh, and not to mention the majority of professional boxers and trainers, they also believe that Canelo won the fight. Now, understand something though, guys, even though we're talking about who we thought won, I mean, really, it's a moot point and it really doesn't matter, especially once Abel Sanchez and Golovkin say they don't, th they don't think they won. I mean, that pretty much closes the case right there. It's an open and shut case soon as Gennady Golovkin's trainer says, I don't think my fighter won. Because we know that he would be the most biased person towards his own fighter. And if he's not saying, I thought my fighter won, it doesn't really matter what fans and, and media are saying. But this is what I wanna ask you guys. How is it possible that the majority of media members and boxing fans, according to Jim Lampley, they all believe that Golovkin won the fight, but yet the majority of professional boxers and Golovkin's own trainer, they don't think that Golovkin won the fight. How is that possible? You know how that's possible, guys? Because the average professional boxer or professional trainer, they don't have an agenda when they answer the question. A media member, especially boxing fans, because media members are boxing fans, they have an agenda. So of course they're gonna say that. Think about this for a second. These media members and these boxing fans, they are the ones that are responsible for Gennady Golovkin being the most overrated fighter of this era. You had ESPN who rated him top two, the greatest middleweight in the last 25 years of this generation, right behind Bernard Hopkins, over fighters like Roy Jones, over fighters like Jermaine Taylor, uh, Kelly Pavlik, James Toney, which by the way, all those fighters I just mentioned, they have a signature win, a big signature win where they won decisively with no controversy. But yet they put Golovkin over all of these guys. So why would it surprise you the same people that rated Golovkin that way are now saying in a close fight that Golovkin won the fight? They have to say that guys. They have to say that because if they don't say that, then they're gonna look like even bigger fools if they just admit that he lost in the one fight that he was supposed to win. And he was supposed to win decisively. These media members and these biased fans, they have no choice but to run with that narrative. Because at the end of the day, guys, this is bigger than a decision between Golovkin and Canelo. This is about saving face for Gennady Golovkin. You see, these same members, they were praising Canelo Alvarez. But now that Canelo is going against Gennady Golovkin, they're gonna praise Golovkin more because he's higher on that hopeless, if you know what I mean. And they know that Golovkin has more to lose because Golovkin has been praised as almighty. He's been praised as the living legend, as Jim Lampley called him. See, Canelo has his hope insurance, but they threw him under the bus. He was expendable so they could save Gennady Golovkin. They also know that Canelo Alvarez, he's still young, right? But Gennady Golovkin, this was the fight he had to win, just as Jim Lampley put it. Just as Jim Lampley put it, this fight was so important for Golovkin to win that if he lost this fight, his entire career would be a failure. See, what you fans have to understand and realize is realistically, it doesn't matter who we thought won the fight. The bottom line is Canelo, or Golovkin rather, he's been calling out a smaller Canelo Alvarez for two years, right? He bypassed the Andre Ward fight, which would have catapulted him as pound for pound the best fighter in the world if he would have beat him, right? He didn't want to fight James DeGale, who was calling him out when, when James DeGale was dangerous. He didn't want to fight Edislani Lara. He only wanted to fight Canelo Alvarez, right? And when you fight him, you struggle against him. And then you fight him in a rematch and he backs you up. Another question, guys, how is it possible that a much smaller Floyd Mayweather 
was able to back up Gennady was able to back up Canelo, but a much bigger, stronger Golovkin couldn't do it. How was that possible, guys? How was that possible? This is what makes Golovkin look so bad, guys. And something else I want to mention, uh, when I said the majority of boxers and trainers, they pick Canelo, um, I'm not saying all of them because I know Pauli Malignaggi, at least from the headline that I read, I know Pauli Malignaggi, I believe he thinks it's a robbery. You guys correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe just from the headline I read that Pauli Malignaggi, he thought Golovkin won the fight. Once again, you guys correct me if I'm wrong. I only read the headline. But I'm not saying that no one thinks Golovkin won. There are some people that think Golovkin won. The point is, the fight was never supposed to be that close for anyone to even question the decision. And that's the problem for Gennady Golovkin. We know that if Golovkin has a third match with Canelo Alvarez, he's gonna struggle with Canelo again. And he might even get knocked out. I don't even think Golovkin wants the fight. Maybe he does, maybe he doesn't. I know his trainer, Abel Sanchez, said that he wants a, th uh, a third match, but that's his trainer talking. That's not Golovkin talking. Golovkin was already saying before this that he was thinking about retiring. Golovkin said even before the Matarosian fight that he's thinking about retiring after the Canelo Alvarez rematch because he said every fight now is difficult and his family wants him to retire. So we really don't know where Golovkin's head is right now. And Golovkin is in a bad situation right now. He's in a bad situation because if he fights Canelo Alvarez in a rubber match, he can end up going out the same way Kovalev went out when he rematched Andre Ward. Golovkin could end up getting knocked out and that would ruin his legacy even more. So Golovkin has a real uphill battle, guys. The problem with Golovkin is I don't believe that Golovkin is that strong mentally. He's not that strong mentally. That's the reason why he was giving up ground against the smaller Canelo Alvarez. Golovkin is not comfortable with an inside fight. Even though he talks about Mexican style, Golovkin is anything but Mexican style. Golovkin is a boxer puncher. That's what he is. He's an aggressive technical fighter but he's only aggressive when he's in there with a fighter that is not that much of a threat to him. Because we didn't see him being aggressive against Canelo Alvarez. He wasn't aggressive against Danny Jacobs, and I don't believe he will be aggressive against any fighter on those fighters level in the near future. So Golovkin has a serious problem, guys. He has a serious problem. No matter what he does, the only thing Golovkin could do to really, really rectify the situation, if Golovkin still does want to be considered great, if he wants to be considered a living legend, the only way he will be able to fix this situation is if he were to go in there and dominate Canelo Alvarez in a third match and then avenge that controversial decision that he got over Danny Jacobs and beat him decisively, and then you could retire, right? But if he really had the confidence that he was the best, he would then keep his belt and fight his mandatory Jamal Charlo. Then you could say he's a living legend. I would tell you guys he's a living legend then. If he beat Canelo decisively and then turned around and beat Danny Jacobs and Jamal Charlo, I would definitely call him a living legend then. But when it comes to Jim Lampley, you cannot take him seriously. You can't take anything he says seriously. Because the fact that he called Golovkin a living legend before he even fought Canelo in the rematch, that suggests that he already had his scorecard written out. His scorecard was filled out before the first round even took place. I mean, can you guys imagine if the standards were set that low for black fighters? If a black fighter only had to accomplish what Golovkin has accomplished, which I guess would be knocking out David Lemieux. Can you imagine how many black fighters would be considered living legends by Jim Lampley? If the same criteria and rules applied when it comes to black fighters? You know, Andre Ward, he predicted this. 
Andre War predicted this in the interview I did with him last week, and I'm gonna upload that video uh, very shortly. Matter of fact, I'll try to upload it tonight. But when I was talking to Andre Ward about this fight, Andre Ward, he said to me, no matter what Golovkin does in this fight, he said Golovkin could get clipped in the first round and they're going to make excuses for him. They're going to say the lights was too bright or whatever the case may be. They're going to make excuses for him. And this is exactly what the media members are doing. Once again, I want you guys to understand there's nothing wrong with saying, oh, the fight was close. It could have went either way. But you have fans sitting over here damn near wanting to break their keyboard saying, oh, that was a robbery. And I'm seeing comments in the comment section where some fans are saying, F anyone who thought that Canelo won the fight. This is what I mean when I say this is bigger than the decision. This fight, it means more than this. And this is the reason why these fans are so adamant when it comes to defending Gennady Golovkin. But we all know that if Golovkin was on the coincidental list, then they would be saying he definitely lost the fight because he was just running in the fight. We know this to be the case because this is exactly what they said when Edison Lara fought Canelo Alvarez. Think about this for a second, guys. The one thing I noticed about Jim Lampley is either he's not good enough at covering up his racial bias or he just doesn't care. Because it's obvious when you look at the way he treated Nicholas Walters when Nicholas Walters had a draw against Jason Sosa. The funny thing is, Jim Lampley, he covered the whole fight. And throughout the whole fight, he talked as if it was a foregone conclusion that Nicholas Walters had already won the fight. But once the scorecards were read and we found out it was a draw, all of a sudden, Jim Lampley, he started talking like it was a draw. He was talking almost as if it was somewhat of a victory for Jason Sosa. Once again, when Canelo fought Edison Lara, we didn't hear Jim Lampley talking about robbery. We didn't even hear Jim Lampley say the fight could have went either way. And that's something else you guys notice. Do you guys notice? Never, ever since social media emerged, you guys notice never has there been a fight with a black person where he lost, the black fighter lost in a close decision. And even though it looked like the black fighter may have won the fight, never do you hear any of these same fans that are now saying Golovkin beat Canelo you never heard them say it was a robbery in favor of the black fighter. You notice that guys? It's never been done since the emergence of social media. A black fighter could win 10 rounds to two and it'd be a draw and these fans will say, hey, well, he should have did more in the fight. The same fans. You guys think that's a coincidence that the same fans and media members that Jim Lampley just said right now all pick Golovkin to win this fight. These are coincidentally the exact same fans that said there's no way Lara beat Canelo. There's no way Danny Jacobs beat Gennady Golovkin. And that's the reason why it doesn't matter if these biased people are saying that they thought Golovkin won. But at the end of the day, guys, it really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who you thought won the fight. Golovkin's career is ruined. And as Jim Lampley said, his career is a failure because that was the fight he was supposed to win. And it wasn't supposed to be by a nose. He was supposed to win decisively. If you guys look at all of the greats, you'll notice that when they stepped up in competition, when they were involved in a 50-50 fight where they were evenly matched, if not all the time, the majority of times, they beat that opponent decisively. That's what made them great. That's what they're remembered for. Ali stopped Sonny Liston. Ali stopped George Foreman. Ali had close fights with Joe Frazier, but he lost the first fight, came back and beat him two out of three. And there was no one saying that Joe Frazier was robbed. Floyd Mayweather, he beat Manny Pacquiao with no controversy. He beat Canelo Alvarez with no controversy. He beat Oscar De La Hoya with no controversy. When Floyd Mayweather had a close competitive fight with Castillo, he came back, fought him in a rematch, and beat him with no controversy. This is what great fighters do. This is what living legends do. That's why when it comes to Gennady Golovkin, the biggest and the best win on Golovkin's record is against David Lemieux. 
You can't include the Danny Jacobs in the Canelo fights because we all know that all three of those fights could have went either way. A lot of people thought that Jacobs beat Golovkin and then you have the Canelo Alvarez fight that could have went either way. So Golovkin's biggest signature win is against David Lemieux. By way of contrast, Andre Ward's, his biggest signature wins, you could pick one. It's against Kovalev, it's against Carl Froch, and the list just goes on and on and on. Golovkin does not have one single win like that on that level of competition. So once again, man, it really doesn't matter who people thought won the fight. Gennady Golovkin's resume and his reputation is ruined. He's overrated and he has been largely overrated by the fans and the media. You guys have to remember what overrated actually means. It's the media and the fans that overrate fighters. It was the fans and the media that said that Golovkin was the greatest top two of this generation. It's HBO's Jim Lampley that called Golovkin a living legend before he even entered the ring a second time against Canelo Alvarez. So when we call Golovkin overrated, once again, it is you guys that overrated him. That's all I got for now, guys. I'm on to the next one.